Yo, welcome fronies. So AGS made the loot distribution rules now publicly available. And I gotta say, I was surprised to not see anything new. Shout out to all the people that are supporting the stream, because that question came up a lot. How do I actually get loot? What should I do? It was answered all the way correct. Nothing changed. You have already are on the up-to-date information. Just keep doing it. For the people that didn't join, let me summarize it up and explain it quickly, and then give you some uh, strategies on how you can get the most loot as an individual player or also as a guild. So the first thing is for dynamic events mainly. And for example, when you encounter someone else attacking a giant. Here it's important who hit the boss or the monster first. That's it. So you will see the monster changing color from orange to gray in the HP bar. And basically once it's gray, your loot is not being distributed anymore. If you are playing in a party, it is distributed equally. So if you are a tank or a healer that cannot AOE on dynamic events, you want to try to find a group of six people and then um, play the event together when we're in a PC event. If you are a high DPS player, you probably rather want to play alone because you do not want to share your loot with other people to reach high ranks. If you are actually just leveling in the open world, then you want to be in a group of six people because the experience is shared and the faster you can kill your environment, for example, the more experience you are getting, the faster you can solve quests because all so hits or monsters will give you a quest. Sorry to interrupt, but short self-promotion is needed. Currently, 91.2% of the people watching the videos are not subscribed to the channel. So let's make a deal. If you learn something new in this video, you have to subscribe. So now the peace bosses and the conflict bosses work differently. We are starting with the peace bosses. Here it's like this. If you are a top damage player, you will basically stick by yourself. Yeah? You will just go and deal damage to the boss. And based on the amount of damage that you can deal, the higher your contribution is. That also means that you always want to go into the portal with the least am amount of people there. So your damage advantage has longer time to build up. If there's like so many people on one boss and everyone is doing like 0.1%, if you're doing 0.11% in that short time frame, it, it will not matter. So you always try to choose the ones where you see the least people walking into the portal. On the other hand, if you're, for example, a player that is not like really well geared, then it's more wise to go into a party. Because when your whole party is dealing significant damage, then you will have a chance to obtain the item by chance in that party, no matter how high your contribution was. And on top of that, there's also a random drop version. So even if you are just participating, doing no meaningful things, yeah, you always have the chance to get a random loot. And the people that are getting a contribution loot, they are always excluded from the random loots. And for the uh, um, conflict bosses here, it's not about individual performance anymore. It's all about team performance. So all the damage that you are dealing to the boss is basically counted as damage for your guild. But also, if you're losing, you're losing 70% of the contribution that you already did. This is also why if a boss is about to be dying, like just like a couple percent and you accidentally die, you do not want to go and rest. You want to wait until it's dead first and then you go rest. And in the end, who is getting the item in the guild is completely random. But usually guilds have their own loot system set up within. So um, like the management will either distribute the item, you can auction it. You have some uh, um, activity points that you can trade in for it. Like there's many different things. Even if it would not be random assigned to some people, the guilds will make a plan on how the items are distributed. And I would also recommend to only join a guild where you know how items are going to be distributed because there has lately been many scams happening and posted on Reddit. Try to make sure that you can see some kind of history also in the guild on how they rolled on items, how they're doing it. So it's like documented before like wasting your time in the guild that is then taking stuff away from you. So that also means for guilds in general, the strategy of rushing in last minute, getting damage on the boss is actually not that viable. It's more viable to go in last second and kill the other enemies. So they are losing 70% of their contribution. So last minute fly in dealing damage, no. Last minute trying to wipe, so they have no time to regain their contribution. This is the place that you want to go for as a guild. And one last thing that I want to mention, those bosses are not essential for the game. Like many people are complaining that it's kept, that it's gated by guilds or whatever. Yeah, I'm playing the game just fine. 
I got one loot so far and that sold for, I think, 300 Lucent. This is only a, a small part of the game. Your main progress is coming from way other things than actually this. And that you're actually dropping something that you can use. This is like in the percentage is so rare. You don't even need to worry about if you're getting a world boss drop or not. Just participate, enjoy it, enjoy the PvP and the conflict modes. If you're getting overrun by an alliance, go into the politics, try to set it up, try to do a counter alliance, maybe change the server, also totally viable and legit. Yeah, that was it. If you still have any questions, as always, just let me know in the comments. I will try to answer everything in less than 24 hours. Cheers, guys.